Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing excellent. I'm out here early this morning to do a little brake test on the Right Hand Drive FC. As I've mentioned previously, the brakes on this car, while they work, they don't have a lot of feel, they're a little old, the rotors are kind of grooved, so it's time to change that. But first, I want to do a braking test with the current setup, which is stock pads, stock calipers, stock rotors, and whatever age of brake fluid we currently have in the system. After that, we're going to be switching to some R1 Concepts pads and rotors. We're going to be keeping the same brake calipers, and we're going to be flushing the brake fluid with some new fluid. After that, I'm going to be able to tell you, without a big brake kit, what the difference is when you apply the brake for feel and for results. So first, let's run out here. I'm on a nice quiet road in Mexico. There's some cyclists around, so hopefully they don't mind. But we're just gonna do a quick 100 kilometer to zero brake test. Now in this brake test, I'm not gonna be doing, using any engine braking, downshifting or whatnot. I'm just going to get up to 100, find a nice safe spot, put it in the clutch and put in the brake, and we'll measure how many feet it takes me to stop. Zero. Okay, let's take a quick measurement. So since I don't have a fancy tape measure, long one, I'm just gonna pace it out. So I broke by this pink flower tree. One, two, three, four, five, six, 40, 41, 42, 43. So about 43 paces. on my way back from Mexico here and I kind of stumbled into a well not a little a huge car meet look at this this is awesome what you gotta do is get the car yeah I always do Okay, so I'm back home from a little brake test and a drive-by on that cool car meet. And I've already got the FC up on all four corners and I already am letting her cool down as well as I have PB penetrating solution blasted. All the hardware we're gonna be taking off from the uh, brakes. Right here, as you can see, I have the new components I'm gonna be putting here. I'm gonna go ahead and, I just pulled those off of the old burnt FC and these are the pads so this kit is from R1 Concepts R1 Concepts uh, makes the pads and the rotors really uh, basic upgrade kit really affordable um, so we're gonna see how they perform compared to the stock setup and of course we're gonna be flushing it through with uh, brand new brake fluid which is gonna make a big help as well and as you can see in here I already have braided lines endless lines from japan so that's pretty cool so 
Hopefully this goes well and you guys watch this video a lot and share it so that R1 Concepts gets to pay attention because I'd like to take one of their big break kits and put it on the other FC as we're rebuilding it. So please help share this content. Now, in my experience, the two hardest things when you're working on your brakes is gonna be depressing the calipers, especially in the rear, and then bleeding the brakes when you're done installing everything. Everything else is actually pretty simple and straightforward. And um, just undoing some bolts, sliding some things together. Of course, you wanna take care in all your steps to make sure that you're installing everything in the correct way. And of course, keeping your brake rotors and brake pads clean and free of debris so you don't damage anything. But I have right here a nice tool that I got off Amazon. I'm going to leave you the link in the description below with this device that uses these different fittings on these different pegs to push in the rear brake calipers. So when we get to that point, I'll show you that. Right now I'm going to go ahead and take these apart and then we'll get moving. And I also bought a brake bleeder, vacuum bleeder kit. So this should make it a lot easier. Uh, to bleed the, bleed the brakes and of course you can do it with just one person instead of having someone who needs to pump the brake pedal each time to push the fluid out. The first thing up front here is we're actually going to take these calipers completely off the vehicle because I'm going to get these painted up. So since we're going to do that I'm going to go ahead and remove the brake line, the hard line, from the caliper. This is going to get brake fluid everywhere, so you have to be very careful that you're just going to be able to clean it up properly and that you don't get it on yourself without protection or your vehicle because the paint is going to go away and it's going to cause a lot of corrosion. Okay. This is already dripping. I'm going to go ahead and get the this little fast food cup under here to catch pretty much all of it as it comes out. And I'm using a flare nut wrench. Highly recommend you get a flare nut wrench to do this so you don't strip anything. Makes the job a lot easier. Because if you strip one of these bleeder valves, then you're in deep trouble. Especially if you strip it and it's not out, you're gonna have to cut the hard line and go get a new one and have somebody figure out how to get it out for you, and it's a mess. Okay, now that we've got the brake light removed, I'm also looking at this fluid, and it looks like not even brake fluid. Might be my problem right there. Might have absorbed so much water, it's gotten really watered down. But now comes one of the fun parts. So there's two 17 millimeter bolts on the back of here, and they're gonna be heat cycled many times and on this of course they've been on here for 90,000 miles and there's plenty of rust under here so I got to break these loose and that's the fun part and that's when you bust your knuckles and all the magic happens so I'm going to try and get these loose once they're broken it's usually pretty easy to take this off So as you can see here, I just went the easy route and got the impact. We've got the two 17 millimeter bolts out. And now this just comes off and it's that simple. So there's plenty of life left on those pads, but these rotors are not in good shape. And we just need to give this whole thing a quick once over. So that's what we're gonna do now. Okay, so repeat the same process on the other side. And now here we got our brake calipers. So first thing we need to do is take apart the pieces that hold in the shoes and pads. So there's a retaining clip on the top here you pull, and these pins should push out somewhat relatively easily. And then you also remove these retaining clips on the pads themselves, which help them return once you've uh, depressed the brake. It holds them away from the rotor a little bit and holds them in the right orientation. So I'm gonna need pliers to pull these out real quick. Okay, 
So my plan out here is pretty simple. We're just going to take these and I'm going to use this wire wheel brush on this grinder here to just clean it up and get most of the rust off of each of these. And then we're going to wipe them down with some acetone, tape them off and spray them. So after just a few minutes of working on the bench grinder, we got them down to this and the rest I'm going to just scuff up with a wire brush as we um, put some acetone on there. We're going to mask off the interior so we don't spray paint any of the pistons or the dust boots in here, which luckily on these are in great condition, so that's a win. And we're going to mask off the bleeder valve. This one has a cap on it, which is great. And then we also need to put a little bit of paper in the actual line for the brake line. And then we should be good to spray. So I'm going to get those ready with some masking tape. All right, so to paint these bad boys, I'm going to use what I use on that FC, which is the VHT engine enamel in a gloss black. We're still just working with stock calipers, so that I don't want to make them too flashy. And... Uh, just make them look nice and clean instead of old and rusted. So the black works fine for me. Got them out here dried after their acetone bath. They're not perfectly cleaned, but I think they're going to hold just fine. Uh, everything I try and wipe off at this point doesn't come off at all. So it's, I think, just as much as part of the metal as anything else. So time to get spraying. So while those are drying out back, let's go ahead and get our brake rotors replaced. So first thing you need to do are get these set screws out of here. And I've already hit these again with the PB blaster because they are usually not too keen to let go. As you can see already, oh. and of course the brakes are no longer on here so they're spinning more freely. Probably should have taken these off without before the calipers, but oh, they're always hard. If you have an impact screwdriver, which is you hit it with a hammer, works like an impact wrench, um, I would highly recommend that. But for me, I'm just gonna have to figure this out. Probably get a wrench here to hold it. And just torque on it. Oh boy, okay, so I ended up needing to get one of these impact screwdrivers so i was able to get one of these it's not the best working one but got it to work um, and then i actually this piece that comes with it can go on the ratchet driver once you get a little loose and pull that off but right now i was able to get both of these set free and what i had to do to hold this in place is put one of the wheel lugs on get it into my torque wrench and use it as opposed to hold it there so now that these are free we have to beat the crap out of this brake uh, disc as well because most likely this is not just going to want to come off so let's see here oh probably from beating it with the impact screwdriver there we go Whew. so that was quite a struggle but here you have old, you can see all the calcium and scarring and rings around it like a tree. It's not supposed to look like that. And there's our new. So got to spray this whole thing down with a brake cleaner and clean it up because obviously I've touched it. There's been dirt and chemicals out here that we've been using to brake bolts and brake fluid. So that needs to be perfectly clean when it goes on. So I'm going to wipe that down with a brake cleaner and then throw it on. And 
and there we have it. New brake rotor installed. So now we're just going to repeat the process on the other side. Okay, so finally we're moving on to the rear calipers. There's a couple things we need to accomplish here. First of all, we need to get the brake pads out. And usually, if you're just doing a brake job, you don't have to swing back the calipers or remove them like we did on the front disc brakes. You can just remove a carrier bolt down here with a 12 millimeter and swing this up and change the pads. We are gonna change the discs though, so we do need to get these this whole assembly off. And we're gonna do that by removing two 13 millimeter bolts on the back side here. First though, I'm gonna try and get this 12 millimeter carrier bolt loosened, which seems like it's gonna go. There we go. That's great. Perhaps I can show you what it looks like if you're just doing the brakes. See, so that lifts up right there. And all the little pieces start to come out. So, uh, we need to move that carrier bolt as well, even though we're taking the whole assembly off, because we have to depress the piston that's in here. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, get this baby apart, and then I will show you the new tool I got and how to depress that piston, and we'll change this disc as well. What we need to do now is depress this caliper right in here. Right there. So, when you have the rear brakes on most vehicles, what you have is you have some sort of pattern in here and you're going to have to rotate that to get it to go in. So the reason you need to get it to go in is because here's the old brake pad. You can see it's pretty thick still, but here's the new one. And you can see that this one is thicker than that one. Almost the same, so these look pretty new but most of the time you're going to be dealing with more degraded brake pad and that caliper right now is set for that thickness so it will not slide over the rotor so i'm going to set up the tool with the correct attachment and we're going to back that thing in before i put the disc on when we have plenty of space so here's how this tool kit i mentioned fits in here so i've got a special bit on here that's grabbing those two teeth and it's nice and pressed in there and now when i turn it it actually rotates Sorry, I'm probably blocking the camera. Rotates that piece as it presses. And it's going in nice and easy, which usually this is quite a challenge. And I'm able to do this without it even bolted in. And it's turning it nice and smooth. And I used to do this. I used to sit out here dreading changing brake pads for hours dealing with this. It does take some force, but there we go and that should be good so now we can loosen this up back it off and then we'll be able to get our disc and pads installed we have our disc on and cleaned we have our carrier back on and we have our loose caliper so we need to get our new brake pads in. now these ones came with shoes which is this metal backing on the back they are the same back and front. So the only thing we need to do to install them correctly is to make sure we have this retaining pin in there. And we want to use the product that's going to quiet them on the back of the shoes. So what you do is you take a little bit. This is Sil Guide, Sil Glide brake lubricant. And you just put a little bit on the back of it and spread that around do the same on the other one okay, and this is gonna make sure that don't, don't make too much noise for you gonna take this flip it up do the back side first there are little tabs that you just slide it into there we go on the front should be able to see this a little bit better lift this up we slide it right into the two tabs one here and one here make sure those are together and then 
we take this little retaining pin and there's two holes <laughs> on each brake pad. You simply put it in one and in the other. Okay, they're gonna wanna push out now. So you bring this, cause this is on the carrier bolt. See, tricky. Get back in the tab here. Okay, forward and slide it over. And the, it's sliding over nice like that because we used the tool and compressed the caliper. So now we're good. So now we just take this bolt, get it back in. That is how you do your rear brakes. So again, I'm gonna repeat the process on the other side using that wonderful tool. And I'll leave a link for it in the description below because it makes everything so much easier. So now we've got the brake rotors on all four corners. The two rears have the uh, brake pads installed as well. And we've got our nice painted calipers right here for the front. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these back on. I'm gonna have to assemble all the little pieces here to hold the brake pads in place and then slip those right over uh, reinstalling those and then we get to move on to the funnest part which is bleeding the brakes got everything buttoned up everything back together it's looking good but now comes the funnest part got to bleed the brakes so i've assembled my little gadget here brake bleeder pump First step, it's gonna get some brake fluid in this reservoir up here. And I am gonna try and gravity bleed a little bit before I start uh, using the pump. So we'll see how that goes. If we are lucky enough to not have any catastrophic failure in our brake system, with that vacuum pump, this should be much easier. So let's top this off. Nice, clear, clean brake fluid all the way to the top. And now I'm gonna to go to the back passenger side, furthest away from the master cylinder and start bleeding. Now on the rear calipers, there is funny enough, two bleed valves. I don't know if you'll be able to see them in there, but I'm trying to look through the screen so you can see, but there's one up top. I'm showing them a ladder right now, and there's one below. Now, the best tech site for your FC3S, FC3SPro.com, recommends bleeding the top one first and then bleeding the bottom one. I'm going to use my 8mm flare wrench, flare nut wrench, or you can use an 8mm close ended slip over there and let it out. So let me crack these open and see what happens and then I'll let you guys know the results and show you this uh, brake bleeder tool working. So I've been here pumping for a little while and I am getting plenty of bubbles which is what we want because we open the whole front calipers um, to the air for quite some time so just letting this work its way out. All right, everyone, I am back in Mexico, ready to test these R1 Concepts rotors and pads. So I just have to be clear that I did have to do the normal brake bleeding procedure after trying that small vacuum pump I got. It just was not cutting it um, to pull a strong enough vacuum, uh, pull all the fluid through, but we got the brakes bled with brand new fluid. We've got our refreshed calipers, not gonna make a huge difference. They are stock calipers and we have our R1 Concepts rotors and semi-metallic brake pads. Now, one note on that also is that I have taken some time to use a little left foot braking and hard braking coming down here to Mexico to heat those pads up. These pads and rotors are made for more of a track use purpose, so their initial bite is not that strong. They need to be heated up to have some good response. And again, the, the drilled and slotted rotors are for evacuating the gases and any debris that might get in between your pad and your rotor. And the main point of that is to keep them cool, keep their um, mating surface as efficient as possible to stop your vehicle. As far as it goes with the uh, 
drilled rotors, I mean, there's a lot of debate on that. If I had to choose again, I probably would just buy uh, slotted, but we're working with what we have. So right now we're heading back down the road. I'm gonna go ahead and find uh, almost the exact same spot that we were at before. So we can have the exact similar road conditions um, and the same surface to work off of. So yeah, I'm just gonna cruise down here, make sure there's no cyclists in my way. Uh, and then we're gonna go ahead and do our little brake test. That's a difference. Let's measure this out. Well, I can smell tire. So that's one thing to note. Ooh, and there are skid marks. So let's see. I broke right back over here by this section. And let's pace it out. One, two, three, four, 23, 24, 25. Jeez, 25 paces instead of 43. Obviously, that's a huge difference. Um, I felt it. When I first put the pads on, I was a little nervous because I was like, oh, these are not gripping much more. But I remembered that you have to heat them up. So after giving them a good run and heating them up here, like I actually locked up the tires. Since we have the tires locking up, that means we're basically at the maximum level of braking that these tires can manage. And these are very good tires, Hankook Ventus, and uh, bigger wheels with more rubber. So we've got some significant braking force um, that stops the car much, much quicker. So anyway, let me uh, get off this road and get back from Mexico, and then we'll... Uh, do a little recap. All right, everyone. So I'm happy to say that was a successful brake modification using the R1 Concepts brake package for the FC. We're just back. I'm just back from that uh, brake test that I just showed you in the previous clip. Couldn't be happier, especially for the cost. So please remember to tag us in this tag this video for R1 Concepts. Share it with your friends. We'd love to get their attention. See if they want to support us for any other uh, pieces for our other project cars that we could install and test out for you guys as well. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Stay kind to each other out there. And when they ask you, tell them you want more.